Hi there, it's Michael Bungay Stanier from Box of Crayons. Welcome to this Tools for the Time Crunch Manager webinar. It's going to be lots of fun. And our focus today, our focus this month, is on change. And the title of this webinar, as you can see on the screen there, is Making Change Happen, How to Haul Up the Anchor. Now, I'm taking, as with all of these webinars, I'm giving you one or two really practical tools that you can use as a Time Crunch Manager so you can have more impact and work less hard. And I think this is going to be a really powerful little insight for you. Just so you know who I am, there I am. That's a photo that makes me probably look more handsome than I truly am. But uh, I'm the senior partner here at Box of Crayons. Box of Crayons, we help people and organizations do less good work and more great work. I've written some books, give talks, run programs. You can find all those details out at Box of Crayons. Dot biz. Now, one thing I would love you to do as somebody who's interested in this topic and watching this is to join our LinkedIn group. You can see it there, Tools for the Time Crunch Manager. Search for it on LinkedIn. You'll find it. Ask to apply to become a member. We'll give you the thumbs up straight away and you'll become a member of that group. Lots of good information shared and exchanged and good conversations happening there. Okay. Let's get this way, there I am again, this way off to an excellent webinar. I think you're gonna find this useful. You will need pen and paper. If you haven't got that already, grab pen and paper right now because we're starting with a question. It's the question I start every single webinar with and it is this. On a scale of one to seven, one being low, seven being high, how focused do you plan to be over the next 27 minutes or less? How focused do you plan to be? So one, of course, is low. One is, you know what? I plan to use this webinar as just pleasant background noise. I've got email to do. I've got paperwork to work through. I've got my phones and gadgets on. I've maximized distractions so that it's deeply unlikely I'll pay attention to this webinar. That's a one. Seven, on the other hand, is I've really got myself in a zen state. I've removed distractions. I've reduced the likelihood I'll be interrupted. I'm giving myself the best chance that I'm going to get what I want from this short webinar. Now, whatever number you've given yourself, I don't mind. The choice is yours. Um, why don't you make some adjustments to your environment so that you're more likely to hit the number that you've just given yourself? Give yourself the best chance to get what you want to get from this webinar today. Okay, so let's get on to the topic. We're talking about change, and here's one of my favorite quotes about change. I don't know who said it, but uh, I love it. Change is easy. You go first. Of course, we all struggle with change. Change is ubiquitous. It's everywhere, whether it's a personal change we're, we're doing, maybe New Year's resolutions, or just trying to get build better habits, or team change, or organizational change. It is an ever-present element in all of our lives, and it is difficult. It's messy, it's complex. Some change we can do easily enough, but a lot of change, we find ourselves kind of spinning our wheels, repeating bad habits, doing the things that we really don't wanna do, but somehow we're back doing that again. And if that rings any bells for you, I think you'll find what I've got to share with you pretty powerful. And actually, it comes from the work of Robert Keegan and Lisa lascaux Lee and their book, Immunity to Change. Now, to tell you the truth, I've read a bunch of Robert Keegan's books before, Bob, as I know him because I've done the training with him. And I have to say, I find most of them pretty impenetrable. I understand all the words. I just don't understand how he puts them into sentences together. But this book kind of blew my head apart. And I really want to share a, a key insight from the book with you. And I'd encourage you to go and pick up the book as well, because uh, even better go and do the training with uh, Bob and Lisa in, in Boston. It's, uh, it's a really powerful process. The key insight is this. When we create change, when we commit to change, we create great plans. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna do that, I can see the future, this is where I want to get to, and we've got lots of good intentions and lots of kind of hopes for that future. And so the plans may be slightly dodgy, they may be really robust, but we've got that sense of, this is where I'm heading to, this is what I'm up for. The problem is, and the challenge is, that often it feels like we've got an anchor slowing us down, even as our sails try and fill with wind. So even though part of us is moving towards the right direction, for some reason we stay stuck in the same place, stuck in the status quo. And that is frustrating, frustrating for you, frustrating for those around you. And if you've ever had that experience of the New Year's resolution, where you make the same New Year's resolution as you made the previous 12 years, or the performance appraisal, where they say to you the same thing they always say to you, and you're like, damn it, I actually want to do this, but for some reason, I find it hard to do. And here's the key insight, and I think this is great. 
you are making a new commitment that's powerful, that's useful, that's uh, important. It's the one big thing that's going to make the difference for you, perhaps. So that's wonderful. But underlying that, and something that you may not even be fully aware of, is an older, deeper, competing commitment to the status quo. And the key insight is that unless you get clear about what that older, deeper commitment is, it is almost impossible for you to reach that new commitment, that new change goal that you've set yourself. And for many of us, we're a little blind to what that deeper commitment might be. Now, let me be clear about this commitment. It is a commitment that has actually served you well to date. It perhaps has got you to where you are now. But as you realize what it needs to take to get to the next level, you realize that it is not enough. It's not serving you anymore. And until you start to untangle that commitment to be able to put it aside and step away from it, you're a little bit stuck. Now, let me give you an example of what I mean. And I think you'll find at least one of these examples resonate for you, one of the four that I've given you here. So here is, on the left-hand side, a new commitment. I want to build a team. I want to build an awesome team. And here is perhaps a deeper commitment that to the status quo that may not serve that. I want to stay in control at all times. Now, of course, I'm really talking about me here. These are, these are exact dilemmas that I've worked through myself using the immunity to change process. And you can see how the current commitment, it may have been useful, but the goal to stay in control at all times is no longer realistic and it certainly no longer serves the bigger goal I have of building a team. So you see there, build a team, the new change goal, stay in control, the competing commitment that keeps me stuck in the status quo in the here and now. Let me give you another example. Do a great work project. You know at Boxer Crowns we stand for great work. So much of what we talk about, particularly in our great work kickstart programs, is the power of a great work project. But a competing commitment might be to stay safe and never fail. Now there's some value in going, I don't ever want to fail. There's some value in I want to stay safe. It's probably got you to a certain point. But at a certain point, at the, this point now, you have to be aware of and let go of that commitment So you can truly step into that future commitment. Do a great work project. Here's another quick uh, example for you. I want to get promoted. I'm sure that rings true for many of you. But I want to stay humble. Okay, so promoted. I want to get to that next level. I want to do that. But you might have a competing commitment to stay humble. And of course, there's value in staying humble. It may have served you so far. But you can also see how that can be a competing commitment to what you need to bring to the table to get that next promotion. And here's a final example for you. I want to um, be strategic. I want to be more strategic, but I want to make everyone happy. So be strategic, powerful. It's the next step of leadership. It's that being able to see the bigger picture to make the tougher calls. But if you're a commitment, you've got a commitment to make everybody happy. Knowing that being strategic often means the ability to say no to the stuff that you and others want to do. You're never going to get to that that bigger, bolder goal. So I think you're beginning to see the tensions now. Building it on one side, making these bold commitments to the future, to the next level, to the thing that will really make the difference. Fantastic. But we all have competing commitments that keep us stuck in the here and now, keep us stuck at the level we're at. And unless you're aware of those competing commitments and begin to untangle them, to challenge them, to unpick them, you're never going to get freed. You're never going to get the anchor up and get the sails filled with wind. So this is the question really to leave you with right now, which is, so what's your current commitment to change for you, for your team, even for your organization? You know, what is your articulated goal? And If you're not even sure what that is, it's worth thinking about right now because you probably have a half-formulated goal towards change. So what is it? Get clear on that. And once you're clear on that, it's really worth turning around and saying, so what's the deep commitment to the status quo that might be keeping you stuck? What's the deep commitment to the status quo that might just be keeping you stuck? Now, if you want to go deeper in this, because we've really just touched the surface on it, the Keegan and Leahy book, Immunity to Change, is a terrific place to start. But I think already you've got a practical tool and an insight here that will help you to untangle some of the change that you've got. Now, Part of what we believe at Box of Crayons is you need insight and you need action to make a difference. So I want you to reflect now and capture that. 
you know, if there were one or two key ahas or insights from this very short but hopefully useful webinar with me, what might they be? Two ahas or insights. And I'd like you to write those down for me. And you can guess what the next thing is there because it's right there on the screen. If there is an action you're willing to take, what's the action you're prepared to take? And as you write that action down, as you reflect on it, what I would like you to consider is, um, when will you do it by? When will you do it by? And perhaps if you want to be bold, who will you share it with? And what I'd encourage people to do on the LinkedIn group, Tools for the Time Crunch Manager, is use that as a place to have a conversation about this webinar, have a conversation about the insights, maybe share your own insights and your own commitments, because you'll find a really nice community of people there who are willing to engage in the conversation about this key insight about change. So if you're interested in more about Box of Crayons, you know, our programs are particularly directed towards practical coaching skills for the time crunch manager. If that feels like it might be useful in your organization, please do reach out to us, boxofcrayons.biz, and you'll find plenty of ways of getting in touch with us right there. And just as a, a final request, I'd love you to join our LinkedIn group, Talk to the Time Crunch Manager. Lots of great people there, lots of great content being shared. Come in, jump in, and hopefully I'll see you at the next webinar.